And my desire as a Christian should be, God, I want to dance to your rhythm. I want to follow your patterns and not the patterns of the world. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to speak on the topic, staying grounded as I reach new height with the Lord. It is such a pleasure to have you watch this video. If this is your first time clicking, stay on as we discuss this. This video is inspired by a prayer the Lord laid in my heart. And the prayer says, Lord, as you lift me higher, keep me grounded. This came through a series of thoughts of seeing people that have gotten to some certain height and then lost focus. Or they have gotten to such height at the expense of losing what really matters in their life. And there are so many people which you can talk about that have climbed height of success in career, height of success in personal development, in achievement, but then they have lost most important things in their life and most of them have been led astray which is misdirected and when the lord laid this prayer in my heart it felt like i really needed this because as god is lifting me higher i need to be sure of my foundation scripture says if the foundation is faulty what can the righteous do and my answer would be absolutely nothing the righteous would only suffer the ill consequence of a faulty or failed foundation the first point i want to speak on this is no height is impossible when you keep in step with god the truth is that god is the lifter of men and he gives resources and influence to people as he wishes and there is nothing for god to lift you scripture says he is my glory and the lifter up of my head so if I would need promotion, lifting, and success in any area, I can bank on the Lord that he can do this. But can he trust my heart when I am not grown and matured to give me the level of influence I desire? Am I keeping in step with him for him to trust my heart that I will not miss it or I will not mess up where he's taking me to? That is why God takes us through a process of grooming, growing, resilience, building something in us that will keep us grounded when we climb up there to the height of achievement and success and personal development sometimes it could be in things like relationship because the simple question would be are you even ready for what you are asking god to give you are you keeping in step with god to keep in step with god means to be in synchronization or alignment with god's rhythm god's pace and god's patterns God has a rhythm and my desire as a Christian should be, God, I want to dance to your rhythm. I want to embrace your pace, your timing. I want to follow your patterns and not the patterns of the world. The world have a pattern of what they could call how to achieve success. 10 ways to achieve success. In this kingdom, achieving success is not about those steps the world might give you. It's about keeping in step with God. Because God does not just want to give you success, but he wants to give you good success. So when you decide in your heart to keep in step with God, your goals will align with God's goals for you. An example of synchronization could be seen in a tree and its branches. No branch can be a fruit on its own unless it is synced with the main tree, with the stem and the roots, because the nutrients are absorbed from the ground by the roots. And then it is sent down through the stem, then the branch can pick up those nutrients to be able to be nurtured, to bear fruit. If we do not keep in step with God, we will not be nurtured. We won't even be able to come to this place of being matured because we need this nurture from God through his word, through his leading, so that we would align with him and see him take us to where we ought to be in life. Scriptures say, remain in me and I in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, but must remain in the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is so important. And this is my confidence that when I keep in step with God, no height, no achievement, no measure of success is unattainable to me. Number two, grounded in a sure foundation. In order to embrace God's lifting, you have to embrace his grounding. You have to be grounded in him. And to be grounded, you need to be intentionally aware 
of the foundation you are on. Yeah, you are a Christian, you go to church, you read your Bible, but which foundation are you grounded on? So this came to me and I was like, Lord God, wherever you take me, may I never come to a place that I feel like I don't need you again. May I never come to a place that I feel like I do not need your guidance. I do not need your leading. I do not need you in my life, your presence and your spirit. Because that is the place of failure. The place of failure for a believer is not necessarily a place of doing something wrong, like what we call overt sins. But it's also in the place of losing touch with the presence of God. Losing touch with your foundation. Losing touch with God leading you, with the Holy Spirit directing you. Because at this point, you might develop pride and feel like I know what to do. Like when God told Saul, go and kill all the Amalekites. Saul went ahead and did as he thought was good because he had advice from the men that he worked with. Even when Samuel told Saul, wait and I will come and do the sacrifice, Saul could not have patience because he felt like, am I not also a king? Can't I just do this sacrifice? That is the place of not listening to the voice of God, thinking you know what to do. And to be founded on the sure foundation, you need to keep listening to the voice of God and be grounded in Him. There are so many challenges and obstacles that are associated with heights in life. It is the same with someone that loves climbing heights or climbing mountains, going on hiking. The higher you go, the riskier it gets. And you may agree with me that when people have attained some height of influence and height of fame and popularity, it's harder for them to live a normal life. And it's easier for them to fall they are in this tension of trying not to fail. That is why you need a grounding. Because there's a risk of losing friendships and companionships in life. There's a risk of losing coordination and the reality of making poor decisions. Because the lack of consistent and sure foundation in the lives of great men and women leads them to fall. As scripture says to you and I, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. This means that God's love is my grounding. God's love is my foundation. If I am founded in the sure foundation of the love of God, I know that whatever height that I am, God loves me. Wherever God takes me in life, my foundation is the love of God. This will keep me. It is a love that keeps on giving. And again in Colossians it says, If indeed you continue to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon, Never be shaken from the hope of the gospel you have believed in. The hope of the gospel of Christ Jesus, the grace of God that is given to you that you have believed, if you have come to that place of accepting and receiving the grace of God, that is your sure foundation. That is why Peter said, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is wisdom for every child of God to be founded on the rock and not build their house on the sand, which is you cannot build your life on your philosophy or the philosophy of the world or on your intellect or on your understanding. You need to build your life on Christ, the solid rock. Scripture says when you build your house on the sand, it is foolishness. Because when the wind blows and chaos come and challenges come, that house will crash. But when you build your life on Christ, you are building your life on a solid rock. Practically, it means as God lifts me higher, I am depending on God. I'm looking up to Christ. I am putting my faith in Christ. I am not trying to think that I can do this on my own. Neither should I think that I can do this alone. Number three. Finding balance as you go higher. Most of the time we find out that many people are so ambitious. Like your ambitions overcloud your need for a foundation, for a grounding. Because you want to get what you need at all costs. You don't need to live such a life as a Christian. Yeah, you need money, but you don't have to love money. You don't have to allow the love of money to consume you. Money is a resource that God wants to give you because it is necessary for life. Money is a necessity. Even scripture says that money is a defense. But by the time you allow your heart to crave it, and then that avarice grows in your heart, you will want to get rich at all costs. Which means 
you can do anything just to get rich. And that is the place that you lose balance. You need to find a balance. Is money necessary? Yes, it is. Is gaining success necessary? Yes, it is. But it shouldn't be at the cost of or at the expense of losing what is most important to you, which is losing you to get those things. Because we live in a society and generation whereby a lot of people sacrifice their life just for a few years of riches and wealth and fame. And that doesn't make sense at all. What makes you go into this? If not that the devil is deceiving you. Find a balance as you desire to go higher. Why do you want to go higher? What is the purpose behind you needing money? Do you want to become rich so that you can show people that you are rich? You want to flex. If it is not attached to the purpose that God called you, then there is no balance on that. God has to lift me higher, keep me grounded. Keep me grounded in my purpose. Help me know why I am here. Help me know when I have money, what do I do with the money that I have? Finding the balance is important in your life. It is not all about ambition. Ambition without purpose will lead you astray. It will corrupt your heart and pollute your life in the long run. For example, someone that have a lot of money without purpose will not know what to use that money to do. So now, a lot of options is presented to them. And then they would want to try these options and... and Try to explore things because now they don't really have a purpose for the riches that is presented to them. So they just want to try different things. And at the end of the day, they might end up hurting themselves. Scripture says, But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. God desires to lift you, but God wants you to be grounded. God doesn't want you to be lifted without foundation, without maturity. Do not assume that you are grounded because you do not have a lot of money, because you do not have a lot of success on your hands and achievement, because the poor person would always think that they are grounded, that they are humble for real. Deep down, they have the love of money eating them up. And I'll talk in details about that in a future video. But on this line of thought, God wants to lift you higher, but God needs you grounded. Number four, the way up is humility. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time, He will lift you up in honor. For God to keep you grounded, it is for God to keep you humble. The scripture says that pride leads to a fall, but humility leads to honor. That is your way up. And the truth is that people think humility is humiliation. You're wrong. Humility leads to honor. But when you take on pride, that is when the humiliation comes. When you are intentionally humble and obedient to God, that is not humiliation. Humility helps you keep stability in life. It makes you stable. Humility does not mean cowardice either. Because so many people might think that is humility, which is walking in this piety and poise, religious way. Like, oh, I'm humble, I don't really respond to people, I don't really talk. No, 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 that's not humility. Humility does not have a particular dressing type, maybe a dressing code. It's not shown by the physical appearance. It is not shown by how you stick your head down to work. That is not humility. Humility is not low self-esteem. The Bible says God did not give you the spirit to fear. He did not give you the spirit of fear. He gave you the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind, which is you can talk about humility to be you are walking in your power, you are walking in love, and you are walking with a sound mind, and that's a stable human being. And that is who you should be as a believer, a stable person, someone who is not moved by the waves. Someone who knows who they are, you are sure of who you are. Now, when it comes to self-esteem, a lot of people struggle with their self-esteem and then they end up embracing these two weaknesses instead of embracing humility. What are these weaknesses? Some people embrace low self-esteem and then they feel like I'm just being humble. That's not humility. Like I said earlier, humility is far beyond that. So it could be seen like this swing whereby low self-esteem is this other extreme whereby if it is swinged like this, low self-esteem is down and high self-esteem is up there bright but humility is the stable ground. 
where you are supposed to be founded. A person with high self-esteem will feel like I am better than everybody else. Nobody can do what I do, however they say it. But it makes you feel like nobody measures up to you. You are the best of the best on whatever you want to say. But it is a weakness. That is pride. And the Bible says that is what will lead to humiliation. Because even physically speaking, by the time you meet someone that does better than you, someone that is higher than you, your pride is crushed. Your ego is crushed. And you feel humiliated. Not because the person did something wrong to you, but just because they are better than you. And you were not supposed to compete with anybody. Low self-esteem on the other hand feels like I don't deserve anything good. I am just here on my own. I don't belong anywhere. God doesn't want you to be in that place. That is why the Bible says, humble yourself in the mighty hands of God. This is your way up. Humility. This is your stable ground. And when I say God, I should lift me up, keep me grounded. The thing I'm asking God is keep me humble. Keep me humble in your hands. Keep me humble under your arms. Keep me humble under your power. Keep me obedient to you. Because in the place of humility, I accept who God has made me to be without shame. I am bold about who God has made me to be. I'm not ashamed of who God has made me to be, thinking that if I shine in who God has made me to be, that when people start saying things about me, it's going to make me feel like I'm supposed to be high. No, neither should it feel like, oh, I'm bringing myself up. I'm not bringing myself up. I'm just being me authentically. How God has met me. I'm walking in my gift authentically. And it is not pride because I'm not shoving it up on people. But I am just walking in my lane. Humility will help you walk in your lane and embrace contentment without having to compare and compete with anybody else because you don't need to. And this is where you can adopt this prayer with me. God has to lift me up, keep me grounded. I need a grounding God. I need to be humble. And it is so beautiful to know that it is in me staying humble that I am safe, that I walk in safety. In Philippians, Paul said, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secrets of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I can walk through every season through Christ who gives me strength. If I have little, I won't feel low. If I have much, I won't feel high. I'm still me, no matter what I have. What I have or what I do not have should not detect or define my self-esteem. That would mean that I am having a weakness. If when I have much money, I feel like I'm higher, it elevates my self-esteem, that is a weakness. If when I do not have, it makes me feel lower, that's also a weakness. So you need to come to embrace contentment through humility. Scripture says, yet yeah, true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world. And we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. In conclusion, a humble person who is being grounded in God will live a life of being teachable. Which is, this person will embrace learning new things, seeking help, seeking support, seeking guidance from God and from people. Not thinking that they are higher than everybody else and they know everything, which is pride. And they feel like they don't need help from anybody. Neither do they think that they don't deserve to ask anybody anything, which is low self-esteem. But this person is humble. I'm embracing the grounding of God. I'm grounded in humility. My ambitions do not take my head off. But my ambitions is balanced with humility. I know that God alone takes me higher when I am humble. I'm not trying to get anything at all costs. Which means if it takes doing something that is against God's will, if I am someone that wants to get things at all costs, I might go out of God's will and God's way and God's pattern and God's rhythm and God's space to do it. God forbid. You don't have to go out of alignment with God to do or get anything. Keep in step with God. Stay grounded in His love and faith in Him. Stay grounded and be balanced in life, which is whatever you seek for checkmate and know, do I have purpose attached to it? If I want to get rich, am I getting rich 
having purpose in mind, what do I want to use the money to do? Then finally, I need to embrace humility to know that it is in humility that I have stability. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video is beneficial to you. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel and follow up with the content that God keeps bringing through me to you because I believe it is not of me. And I hope to see you in my next YouTube video. Thank you. Bye-bye.